Teresa Earnhardt's back in the news and Roger Carruth made NASCAR history on Friday night in Las Vegas. Teresa Earnhardt, back on our bullshit once again. The Wicked Witch of the Southeast just refuses to go away and ride off into the sunset like we all wish that she would. So this week, Carowinds, a theme park in North Carolina, announced that their roller coaster, the Intimidator, would be undergoing a name change. Instead of being called the Intimidator, it would now be called Thunderstriker, which is... A lot like they just typed into chat GPT, what's a roller coaster name? And then they asked Canva to create the most generic looking logo of all time. And this is what we got. Regardless, they couldn't come to an agreement with DEI with Teresa Earnhardt to extend the licensing agreement to continue to use that Intimidator name. So it's gone. And now Thunderstriker's there. There's also one in at Old Dominion in Virginia that was called Intimidator 305. It will now be called Project 305 because if there's one thing I know about Cedar Fair, it's the fact that they have no creativity left in their bones. I mean, they took the Italian job and renamed it Backlot Stunt Track. These people have no creativity. None whatsoever. They're like the anti-Disney when it comes to naming things. But Therese Earnhardt has protected these DEI trademarks more than anybody's protected anything in life. The people at the Alamo didn't protect it as much as she has done this. Will Smith tried to protect his wife less than what she's doing with these. The people that own the rights to the Eleanor Mustang, if you're a car person, you completely understand the story behind this. They haven't even gone to the extent that Therese has gone with, and those people are insane. Teresa just continues to go above and beyond to make everybody's lives miserable, and it's all about just chasing this dollar. Granted, I get it. She lost a partner, very traumatic. It was 23 years ago at this point. Uh, maybe we just move on at, at this point. It is worth noting, though, that the trademarks on the number one and the number eight are up this year. So she was presented in November, and she had to provide details on why she should be able to keep that trademark, meaning that she has to at least prove that she's selling merchandise or using that font, that logo, everything like that um, to make money. She has until March of this year to prove that. If not, then those trademarks are back out in the open. She let the 15 laps and Michael Waltrip went ahead and snagged that up, which I think that makes perfect sense. And if it happens to the one and the eight, maybe Dale Jr. can swipe in there and uh, swoop in there rather and swipe those away from her. But it's just like Teresa Earnhardt will not go away. And honestly, they could have named this something better, too, than Thunderstriker or Project 305. Like, Ironhead is out there, Man in Black, that could have worked. Somebody on the internet said Wallbanger, or there was a couple other ones where I was like, all right, got a chuckle out of me, dark humor. I'm, I'm in for it. But yikes. We're go Either way, just go away, Teresa. I mean, it, it, it's, this woman just refuses to have any sort of fun in her life, and you know, maybe she'll go on the Dale Jr. download someday and, and talk about everything. Probably not, but it would actually honestly be interesting. I'd actually love to hear from her um, just to sort of see what Teresa Earnhardt's life is like. It's not like she needs the money. She's sitting on generational wealth uh, that came from Dale, unless she, of course, just burned it all. But then again, if she actually needed cash, she could just sell off the DEI archives there as well. Either way, Teresa Earnhardt just won't go away. It's always something with her. Right in 2022, she got mad at Trackhouse for w using the one in the uh, 99 and kind of stylizing it the way that um, DEI had back in the day. And now she shows up doing this again. She's going after Carrie. It's always something with this lady. And she just refuses to ever go fully away. So that's what's happening with the roller coaster, in case anybody cared. Uh, you can still go visit it. It'll just be called Thunderstriker. And. Um, but always be in the intimidator in the hearts of the people that go there. I still will go to a theme park and be like, I'm referring to it as Top Gun, not the bat. Why would you ever want to do that? So moving on, Roger Carruth made history on Friday night in Las Vegas. Kind of the opposite of Teresa. Teresa just annoys everybody. Roger's over here doing really cool things. So I love it when good things happen to good people. And Roger Carruth is good people. After 30 truck series starts, he goes to victory lane on Friday night in Las Vegas, becoming only the third black driver in NASCAR history to win a NASCAR National Series event. That's a massive accomplishment. I know people on the internet are like, it doesn't matter about race. Why is race always got to be brought up? Because when only three more people have walked on the moon than black people have won in NASCAR. It's worth talking about. It's something worth mentioning in it. And for Raja, this kid just started racing cars in 2019, flash forward five years basically, and he's standing in victory lane of a NASCAR national event, not at a super speedway, didn't luck into it, qualified on pole, led 38 laps, and then secures the victory there at the end. Somebody in the comments, I know 100%, will be like, well, the two people that he was battling with got speeding penalties. Well, 
they shouldn't have got speeding penalties. Then he still had to pass Taylor Gray to win the race, and he went on to win it. If Tyler Ankrum wins that race, or if Taylor Gray wins that race, are people being like, well, the two people that he was racing with got penalties? No, they're not. It's always something. For Raja, though, this is massive. His offseason, we knew he was going to Spire. Like, if he was going somewhere, it was going to be to Spire. HendrickCars.com and Rick Hendrick stepped in to sponsor him at least in 10 races this year to get his his deal going. They announced this week that they'll be sponsoring him in all 23 races in the truck series this year, which again is huge for him and huge for that Spire team. Hendrick Motorsports seems to have taken a vested interest in Roger. They put him in the Xfinity car at the end of 2023. Wouldn't be shocked to see him show up there again this year, but now they're also backing him at Spire. He has the Hendrick Motorsports badging on his driver's suit. There's a lot of connection there. So I'm not saying he's a development driver for the team, but they're certainly keeping him close to the vest or close to the family, at least over at Hendrick Motorsports. And for Raja, the, he's an all-around good kid, right? He's a senior at Winston-Salem State University in North Carolina there. He says he's going to graduate in December of this year. Massive accomplishment for him. He's an absolute sponge. This kid just studies racing more than I think any other development driver that we've ever seen out there. If he's not in the race, he's on the roof or he's on a pit box just trying to get more information than he can. He breaks down races before they happen with Bubba Wallace and the week leading up to whatever that is. He constantly is talking to spotters and trying to get a better feel on what he can do better as a driver. I sat with him last year on the hillside at IRP. He and Daniel died before the truck race. We watched the end of the uh, ARCA race and the kid just sits there and he just, like I said, absorbs everything that's going on. He was yelling at Luke Finhouse a few times to move his lane up and ultimately end up costing Luke, but there was some other funny business that was happening there. Like I said, though, the guy just absolutely gets it. He's 100% the type of development driver you want to see in NASCAR. He's not here because he's a spoiled rich kid. He's not here because his dad owns a team or anything like that. He's here because he can drive a race car. And that's exactly what he went out there and did on Friday night in Las Vegas. And again, he beat a field that had Christopher Bell, Zane Smith, and Kyle Busch in it. All three guys are in the NASCAR Cup Series, and people still want to discredit it. It just blows my mind. Either way, it's very cool to see Roger Carruth go to victory lane and... He's having a massive year just through the first three races. In 2023, he ran a full season with GMS Racing. He had three top 10s across the entire season. To start this year, he has three top 10s and three races, two top fives and a win to go along with it. He's having a career year. He's locked into the playoffs right now as well, along with Nick Sanchez. Who would have ever thought that maybe those would be the first two guys to lock themselves into the Truck Series playoffs? But for Raja, he's got it done. I'm excited to see what happens for him the rest of the year. And for once, the truck series like actually was pretty decent for the most part. It wasn't a disaster like we've come to expect from what was once kind of just Arca that's now morphed into the truck series. So love to see that. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.